Let us see the process of fragmentation. Some of the multicellular organisms have relatively simple body organization, which can break up easily into smaller pieces on maturing. These pieces of fragments can then grow, and form new organisms completely in all respects. This method of reproduction is called as fragmentation. Fragmentation can be defined as, the breaking up of body of simple multicellular organisms into two pieces on maturing, each of which subsequently grows to form a complete new organism. Fragmentation can be mainly observed in Spirogera. The main difference between fission and fragmentation is that, in fission, a unicellular organism breaks up to form two or more daughter organisms, whereas, in fragmentation, a multicellular organism breaks up to form two or more daughter organisms. Fragmentation does not happen in all the multicellular organisms, as many of the multicellular organisms are not simply a random collection of cells. Here note, that spirogera is a filament as freshwater green alga, containing spiral bands of chloroplasts. Regeneration the process of getting back a full organism from its body parts, is called regeneration. In some organisms, small cut parts of their body can grow to form whole new organisms in all respects. Regeneration is the process of a sexual reproduction, in which the organisms give rise to new individuals from their body parts. For example, animals like Hydra and Planaria, can be cut into any number of pieces and each piece grows into complete organism. If planaria had been cut into a number of pieces, then each piece grow into a complete organism. Regeneration is not the same as reproduction, as most organisms are not able to reproduce on cutting into pieces. The regeneration of an organism, from its cut body part occurs by the process of growth and development. This process, takes place as follows. The cells of cut body part of the organism divide rapidly, to make a ball of cells. The cells present in the ball of cells move to their proper places within the ball, where they have to form various organs and body parts of the organism. The cells then change their shapes, to form different types of tissues. These different tissues form various organs, and body parts of the organism. In this way a complete organism is regenerated. Here we should note that, regeneration can be used to reproduce only those organisms, which have relatively small body organization consisting of only a few specialized cells. Next move on to budding. Budding is an asexual method of reproduction. In budding a small part of the body of the parent organism, grows out as a bud which then detaches, and becomes a new organism. For example, the asexual reproduction by budding, is observed in Hydra. In Hydra, first a small outgrowth called bud is formed on the side of its body, by the repeated mitotic divisions of its cells. This bud then gradually grows to form a small hydra, by developing a mouth and tentacles. And finally the tiny new hydra detaches itself from the body of the parent hydra, and lives as a separate organism. Now we will discuss about vegetative propagation. In vegetative propagation, new plants are obtained from the parts of old plants like stems, leaves, and roots, without the help of any reproductive organs. This method usually involves in the growth and development of one or more buds present on the old part of plant. Vegetative propagation is used in methods like layering and grafting to grow many plants like sugarcane roses and grapes etc. Plants raised by vegetative propagation can bear flowers and fruits earlier than those produced from seeds. The advantage of vegetative propagation is that, all plants produced, are genetically similar enough to the parent plants, in their characteristics. Here note, that vegetative propagation is also called vegetative reproduction. Let us see the artificial methods of vegetative propagation. Artificial methods of vegetative propagation are the methods in which, many plants are grown from one plant, by using one of these man-made methods. Cuttings, layering and grafting. Let us see the process of cutting in detail. Cutting is the removal of a small part of plant, 
by making a cut with a knife. A cutting may be a piece of stem, root or even a leaf. While cutting a plant, care must be taken to see that there are some buds on it. In this method, a cutting of the parent plant having some buds on it is taken and its lower part is buried in the moist soil. After a few days the cutting develops roots and shoot and grows into a new plant. Plants like rose, grapes, sugarcane, banana and cactus can be grown by means of cuttings. Coming to layering. It is a method of vegetative propagation in which a branch of the plant is pulled towards the ground and a part of it is covered with moist soil, leaving the tip of the branch exposed above the ground. After a particular time, new roots develop from the buried branch. The branch is then separated from the parent plant. The part of branch which has developed roots grows to become a new plant. Plants like strawberry and raspberry are grown by this method for propagation. Now let's study about grafting. Grafting is a method in which the cut stems of two different plants, one with roots and the other without roots, are joined together in such a way that the two stems join and grow as a single plant. The stem with roots is called stalk and the stem without roots, the upper part, is called a scion. The scion is placed over the stalk and tied with a piece of cloth and is covered properly with a polythene sheet. Grafting is mainly used to breed fruit trees and flowering bushes like apple, peach, apricot and pear trees. Let us describe a small activity to explain the process of vegetative propagation for potato. Take a fresh potato, observe scars on it with the help of a magnifying glass. You may find butter buds in them. These scars are also called eyes. Cut a few pieces of the potato, some with eyes and some without eyes and bury them in the soil. Water the pieces regularly for few days and observe their progress. After a few days, we can notice that the pieces of potato which were having an eye gives rise to fresh green roots, whereas the pieces of potato without the eyes doesn't grow any roots. This shows that the new plants arise from the buds of the potato. Let us see the process of spore formation. Spore formation is another asexual mode of reproduction. The reproduction by spore formation takes place in plants. In spore formation, the parent plant produces hundreds of microscopic reproductive units called spores. When the spore case of a plant bursts, then the spores spread into air. When this air-borne spores land on food under favorable conditions, they germinate and produce new plants. The spores are covered by thick walls that protect them until they come into contact with another moist surface and can begin to grow. For example fungus growing on a slice of bread. Till now we studied the need for reproduction, let us see how the organisms are created. Now we will discuss whether organisms create exact copies of themselves in a sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction usually results in the production of genetically identical offsprings. The only genetic variation arises as a result of occasional inaccuracies in DNA replication at the time of cell division. This will become clear from the following discussion. The material which carries genetic information from the parents to the offsprings is DNA. The basis of a sexual reproduction is mitosis. This is the division of a nucleus into two identical daughter nuclei. Each daughter nucleus has the same genetic makeup because of the replication of DNA of the parent cell. After the division of the nucleus, the rest of parent cell divides to form two genetically identical daughter cells. The daughter cell then form two offsprings. From this, we can conclude that all the offsprings produced by one parent as a result of a sexual reproduction are usually genetically identical. These new organisms produced by one parent through a sexual reproduction are called as clones. However, there are slight variations in DNA copying mechanism. As a result of this, the organisms produced may not be 100% identical compared to parent. 
the importance of variations in organisms, introduced during reproduction is, that it helps the species of various organisms, to survive and flourish even in adverse environments.